Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. We have made it to the final episode. It is the Netflix original series, Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. Season one, episode 10 entitled, A Single Piece Was Lost. That's all coming up next. <laughs> It's Bunny. The opening scene, we see Deet and Rion. They are preparing for the battle with the Skeksis and they are making little small bombs. They're testing them and maybe one pops over here and explodes over there and they're having a difficult time but they're getting it together preparing for this resistance. And as Deet makes them, she sees that darkness, that purple indication on her hands. And she wants to hide it from Rion and she doesn't know what to do with it. Is this a good thing? It's, is this a bad thing? So we start to feel a little sad for Deet. The Skeksis, they're preparing for battle. They think this is just going to be an easy peasy battle. They're saying that the Gelfling are small and they are strong. They are eternal and they're putting on battle gear. And as they're putting on the battle gear, we have the scientist and they're looking at the scientists like you're not too much of a battle skitsy you know we need you to stay here and they kind of make fun of his get up and his armor and they tell him to stay there you're not going into to battle we need to keep you safe because you are the knowledge that will be able to pull essence and to be able to work with the crystal and all the machinery so we need to keep you here so you're not going to battle with us we see the gelfling that may Made it out of captivity from the Skeksis and they get to stone in the wood. We see Madre Farah, we see Princess Brea, we see all of these people that were in those cages and when Madre Farah catches eye contact with Rion, she apologizes and says, Rion, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry at the fact that I didn't believe you, I didn't hear you out. You know, you've got to accept my apology. And he says, you are the leader of your clan. You did what you thought was best. So I can't be mad at you about that. And D inquires about, well, where is everybody else? And where is Olga? And they tell her that Olga sacrificed herself in order for them to be released and to be free. Meanwhile, with everybody else gone, but all of the Skeksis gone out of the castle, getting ready for battle and heading to battle, the scientist is going around the castle and he's living his fantasy or has a brief moment to wanting to know what the emperor feels like. He goes around and he's making up different things and you do this and yes and no, this is wonderful. And he is having his moment and being the emperor and what it's like to be the emperor. And as he's doing that, remember we have the hunter that has been placed up as a statuesque type of being that's gone, but he's still in that position because you got to remember the emperor wanted symbolism of them being strong and as the scientist is playing around the hunter comes back to life the gelfling and stone in the wood they say that we're weak and we've got to stop thinking that way just because we're small we've got to do the best we can there's only a few of us here but we've got to do the best that we can. And Rion says, this is what we have to do. And the others inquire, well, what can we do? And Rion expresses that the other clans are on their way and we have to have hope that they'll come and fight along at our side. And they're practicing and they're working on their swordsmanship and they're wondering how they're gonna stand. And they say, if we're gonna go out, we are gonna go out fighting. So we have the Skeksis and the Gelfling are getting ready to fight in stone in the wood. And the emperor tells the battle general, proceed and, and show us your skills and fight basically. And he goes up to Rion and Rion has his dual sword and he's ready to give it all that he's got. And it seems like the, the battle general is too strong for him and is just pushing him back pushing him back to where he can't get close to him. 
and then Rion does this spin move and all of a sudden he gets the sword and stabs the battle general. And when he stabs him, we notice that some type of essence, some type of energy goes into the sword and the sword at the bottom, and it looks like it's a crystal there, begins to glow. And the emperor says, you disappoint me, battle general. You know, you've, uh, you've put us to shame. And he says, I'm sorry, I failed you. And with that, after that happens, we have a montage of battle scenes of them fighting back and forth. We do see that, unfortunately, Madra Farah is wounded and she dies. And at the same time, we see Gelfling perish and we see them pass away. So back at the Skeksi castle, we have the hunter that's come back to life. And back at the Crystal Desert, remember, we have Archer, who is the, mis the mystique that is connected with the hunter. And he feels the presence that the hunter is back and he's on his feet. If the hun hunter gets out and gets on their track, then it's most definite that they'll lose the battle. So the Archer gets up and he proceeds to go to the cliff of where we have everybody else waiting. We have Hup and he goes to the very cliff and Hup is pleading with him, what are you doing? And of course, the archer knows that he has to sacrifice himself in order to kill the hunter. Because as explained in the previous review, the mystic and the Skeksi are connected together. If one dies or one is hurt, that happens to the other. So Archer sacrifices himself by jumping off of the cliff and the hunter dies. When the hunter dies, Olga emerges. She is there with them at Stone in the Wood and the Emperor, with all of his darkness in his scepter, he releases this darkness as an attack towards all of the Gelfling. And we think, how are the Gelfling gonna survive this? Because we have all this darkness that has pushed them back. And all of a sudden, we see Deet, she emerges and she deflects the darkness and all of this power starts to go back towards the Skeksis and she is defeating them and she is pushing them back and you can tell it's taking a lot out of her and she is pushing it out and deflecting the darkness and reflecting the dark energy. When she does this, it makes the Skeksis run away and Rion, while that's all happening, he something happens to the sword to where it damages and breaks and when it breaks inside of the double-edged sword is the shard piece of the crystal of truth poor deet unfortunately as we think that she's deflecting the darkness at the same time she is absorbing the darkness and it's unfortunate that deet has to go away because everything around her when she, wherever she goes, darkness will follow. And they learn that the crystal shard is the missing piece to not only defeating the Skeksis, but making the crystal whole again. That was the end of the episode. It was straight to the point, a brief recap, because there's a lot of fighting sequence that goes on in that last episode and it's hard to describe well Rion did this and he swung and he you know <laughs> so that is the end of the episode now a lot of people um why well, I got bad reviews I noticed or not not class A reviews is because a lot of people were confused about the ending well here's why if you have not seen the original The Dark Crystal that was released in 1982, the ending won't really make any sense. And I don't want to say what the ending is because that I will do that in The Dark Crystal, the 1982 recap of that movie so I can let you know. But there's a big spoiler alert and that will ruin, ruin it 
and I don't want that to upset anybody. So it is a big spoiler alert, and I will put that spoiler alert in that review that will come, in that recap that will come after this. So it's just like a good example, Star Wars. If you grew up watching Star Wars, if you've seen all of the originals, those are the originals. Those are the stories where we know what happens to Darth Vader. We know all of these things. So when they came out with the prequels, the very first batch of prequels, if you had already seen Star Wars, you knew certain endings. You knew what happened to Luke. You knew what happened to Darth Vader. It's the same correlation with these two. If you've seen the original, you know the fate of certain characters, certain beings, uh, what goes on in the world of Thra. Now, what I, what I will say about this series, I give this series a 9 out of 10. The reason why I'm rating it so high is because of this. There is so much that goes on with this production that you don't notice it, okay? So a good example, there's puppetry, there's voiceover, there's acting, there's CGI, all of these things to make the puppetry look so simple. And as I explained in the intro video, if you have not watched the intro video to this series, I suggest you watch it. It's 2019, so we're not used to going backwards when it comes to a form of art. We're used to movies and things moving all around and CGI and puppetry is pretty much in our minds a thing of the past per se because the last time we revisited puppetry it seemed very simple it's something to convey messages to children because it's simple enough and not so overwhelming that they can understand if they did not keep the puppetry you wouldn't have the same feeling or the same energy connecting with the movie that was re released in 1982. For some people, it's very difficult to watch because they're looking at the puppets moving and they're like, this doesn't make any sense. This is so stupid. But I give it a very high review and it's worth watching because if you understand the puppetry and everything that's going on, you have a deeper appreciation for the series. You have a deeper appreciation that people were able to step back to learn and to make that whole experience and that whole matter of art even better. It felt good to just step back out of, out of all of the things that we, we put on computers to correct and to do color, design, sound. But with this, we could hear the crunching of the leaves as the puppets moved or the wind. Everything, in my opinion, was amazing. And some people enjoy it, some people don't. I've seen very low reviews for this. I don't understand why they would after learning what's behind the scenes. Once you learn what's behind the scenes, you go, wow, that is a lot. So let me know what you think. Make sure to keep an eye out for the original recap and review, The Dark Crystal, Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal, um, the movie that was released in 1982. Let me know what you think. It's for some people. Some people think it's absolutely trash, but I trust, trust and believe that once you do your research about it, you will think differently about it. Subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my posts, and follow me on Instagram, same profile name, officialbun underscore E. Make sure to look at other reviews and recaps as well. The easiest way is to go to the playlist tab. And in the playlist tab, I have all categories and all videos all together in nice playlists so you don't have to search and dig for any review, reviews. See you guys another time. I hope that you would watch it. If not, try to diversify your catalog a little bit, and I hope to do that with this channel. See you guys another time. Bye.